Number five on this list is the Human Z. The Human Z, as you can imagine, is a human mixed with a chimpanzee. This is a very interesting entry on this list because whether or not it has actually been created or not is up for debate. Science Alert says a prominent U.S. scientist has claimed researchers in Florida succeeded in breeding a human chimp hybrid called a Human Z in controversial, long long rumored 1920s research. Evolutionary psychologist Gordon G. Gallup Jr., who achieved renown for his pioneering mirror self-recognition experiments with animals in the 1970s, says a former university professor told him the hybrid creature was born at an animal research laboratory where he once worked. One of the most interesting cases involved an attempt which was made back in the 1920s in what was the first primate research center established in the U.S. in Orange Park, Florida, Gallup told The Sun. They inseminated a female chimpanzee with human semen from an undisclosed donor and claimed not only that pregnancy occurred, but the pregnancy went full term and resulted in a live birth. There's little reason to think such an experiment successfully took place and plenty of reasons to believe it didn't. But having an otherwise respected researcher make such a statement is drawing attention to this old rumor once again. It's definitely interesting to see a highly respected scientist in the community come out and make these claims like this. That does tend to carry a decent amount of weight and at the very least deserves to be investigated a little bit. It was also rumored that a few years ago some people came forward requesting government approval to do an experiment like this but it was denied. So there's definitely been rumblings about an experiment like this before, but no definitive proof that it's actually taken place. To be completely honest, I do believe that something like this has went down. I just think that it may have happened behind closed doors, and we may not be privy to it. Like this totally seems like something that the government could be interested in, but wouldn't want the public to find out about. Maybe in some secret base in some very low population part of the world, there is a human Z running around getting experimented on. Number four on this list is the human pig. So as we are going to see from this one, there are a lot of possible benefits from this, but also a ton of moral and ethical questions that pop up. Pagista says the first human pig hybrid embryo has been created in the lab and it represents a major step forward in the field of regenerative medicine. This news comes from a team of researchers at the Salk Institute who were able to successfully grow human cells inside of a pig embryo for the first time ever. While this may sound like something out of a science fiction novel, the potential implications are actually quite significant. This achievement could one day lead to the creation of transplant organs for humans that are made from animal tissue. This would be an incredible breakthrough for those suffering from organ failure as there would no longer need to be a wait for a human donor. Of course, there is still a long way to go before this technology is ready for clinical use. The next step will be to see if these hybrid embryos can develop into healthy adults. But even if that proves to be possible, it will be many years before we see anything like this being used in patients. So here is the thing with this. Yes, it would be awesome to be able to have a steady supply of usable organs to give to people who are suffering or need another one. So many people die from not having enough transplantable organs and this is a problem that needs to be addressed. However, this also raises the question, what about the human pigs? These are going to be half human creatures that are going to be bred for the specific purpose of having their organs harvested. This is clearly a very polarizing issue and something that people a lot smarter than me, they need to look into. Comment down below what you think about this potential innovation and how you think we should proceed. Number three on this list is the Jag Lion. Now in all honesty, this is more cool than it is terrifying, but I still wanted to include at least one relatively cool thing on the list. Also too, if you did run into this thing in the wild, then I can promise you it would be very scary. 
So I think it still qualifies. Pajusta says a jag lion hybrid is a cross between a male jaguar and a female lion. The result is an animal with characteristics of both parent species, although it's usually more similar to the lion in appearance. Jag lions are not currently found in the wild, but several have been born in captivity. The jag lion was first created in 2006 when a male jaguar named Elvis was bred with a female lion named Lola at the exceptional animal park located in Phoenix, Arizona, USA. The two big cats mated successfully and Lola gave birth to six healthy jag lion cubs. Since then, several other jag lions have been born in zoos around the world. These hybrids are not only interesting to look at, they also help scientists to learn more about the genetics of both lions and jaguars. So, like I said, this thing is really cool, but could also be very scary depending on where and how you run into it. In the zoo, where there's a large protective piece of glass between the two of you, not very scary at all. Totally cool. In the jungle, where there is no protective glass and this creature is very hungry, not cool, very scary. Good thing that there really isn't any of these creatures at the wild at the moment, so running into one outside of captivity would be very, very hard, but... You never know. Number two on this list is the Wolfen. Breeding one of the most intelligent creatures with one of the deadliest. Sounds like a great idea. That's what happened here with the Wolfen. Pagistus says, weird hybrid experiments usually make for interesting reading and the Wolfen is no different. This unusual creature is actually a cross between a false killer whale and an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and was first discovered back in 1985. Since then, there have been several documented cases of Wolfens in the wild and even a few captive ones as well. While they share many characteristics with both of their parent species, there are some notable differences that make the wolfen truly unique. For one, they are typically smaller than either false killer whales or bottlenose dolphins with an average length of just over six feet. They also have a more slender build and their flippers are shorter in proportion to their body than either parent species. Interestingly, wolfens also seem to exhibit social behaviors that are more similar to dolphins than whales. They are often seen forming close bonds with other members of their pod and engaging in activities such as surfing and playfully chasing each other around. It would be very rare to spot this creature in the wild, but be very careful if you do. Dolphins are super smart and killer whales, well, they're killers. This is one of the most intelligent and also deadliest animals in the ocean and therefore you need to tread carefully around it. Number five on this list is the human mouse. Now, how the heck did they manage this one? Popular Mechanics says, scientists at the University at Buffalo and the Roswell Park Cancer Institute have bred a new form of human mouse chimera with the highest incidence of human cells ever recorded. Two weeks after the research Researchers injected human stem cells into the developing mouse embryos, one of the newborn mice exhibited 4% human cells, a major advance considering human and animal cells don't typically jive well. While they're still mostly just mice and only a tad bit human, the breakthrough marks a step toward more advanced genetically modified embryos in the future. It's not been possible to generate any human stem cells that substantially contribute to mouse embryos, the scientists say in the paper's abstract. Their work may enable applications such as human organ generation in animals. They go on in that article to get very technical with things and break down exactly how they did it, but in all honesty it got very confusing very quickly to somebody without a science background. The big takeaway here is that there is a mouse out there that is actually 4% human. That mouse to my knowledge, would be the closest thing in the universe right now to a human being without it being an actual human being. Like, think about that. There is a mouse out there that is kind of like our long lost cousin. This, like everything on this list, starts to get very ethically and morally questionable. At what percent of human does this mouse start to become untouchable? Like, at what point do our laws, rights, and freedoms start to apply to the mouse? 20% human? 
30% human, 50%? When does this mouse stop being a mouse and start being a human and start getting treated like a human? And also, what the heck would a 50% mouse and 50% human even look like? Like we're getting into some seriously weird territory here and as much as I get that this could be good for science or whatever, I'm pretty sure I can go the rest of my life without ever having to see a half mouse, half human thing. Ugh. Number four on this list is the human rabbit. You know, if I had to become a human hybrid of any animal, I feel like a rabbit would be cool. At least then I could jump really high and maybe I could finally dunk. The Washington Post says, scientists in China have, for the first time, used cloning techniques to create hybrid embryos that contain a mix of DNA from both humans and rabbits, according to a report in a scientific journal that has reignited the smoldering ethics debate over cloning research. More than 100 of the hybrids made by fusing human skin cells with rabbit eggs were allowed to develop in laboratory dishes for several days before the scientists destroyed them to retrieve so-called embryonic stem cells from their interiors. Although scientists in Massachusetts had previously mixed human cells and cow eggs in a similar attempt to make hybrid embryos as a source of stem cells, those experiments were not successful. Researchers said yesterday they were hopeful that the rabbit work would lead to a new and plentiful source of embryonic stem cells for research and eventually for medical use. But theologians and others decried the work as unethical. Unethical seems to be the theme of this video, folks. That article by the Washington Post was actually written back in 2003. That's right guys, this happened almost two decades ago, meaning that there has been tons of time for them to make better hybrids behind closed doors. Now I'm not saying that they continued with these projects, but I'm also not saying that they didn't continue either. There was a lot of backlash when this first came out, so continuing with this without people knowing, that might have been desired. Who knows, there could be a fully grown rabbit man hopping around somewhere in some Chinese lab for all we know. And finally, number one on this list is mouse human. So we had human mouse, and this is what I'm calling mouse human. Basically, it's the exact same idea as before, except this time, instead of nondescript human stem cells, they decided to go with human brain cells. Basically what they've done here is take a mouse and inject some human brain cells into the mouse. This implant has actually shown to make the mice more intelligent than they were before. When referring to what it does to a mouse's brain, one scientist said it's like ramping up the power of your computer. So there guys, it's just like adding a bit more juice to your laptop. Nothing wrong with this picture, nothing to see here. Yeah. All right, Mr. Science Guy. Obviously, as you can all expect by this point, moral and ethical questions have come up about this practice and whether or not it should continue. I think what I want to know is, where are the human brain cells coming from? Are people like donating their brain cells or how does this work? All I know is that I need to hold on to the ones that I currently have and won't be donating any of my intelligence to a mouse anytime soon. Number five, Nanulak. Kicking this list off, we have a beast more terrifying than literally any other creature on this planet right now. Apparently this thing is real. Yeah. The apex predator. The top of the food chain. Twice interbred. This thing is a killing machine. The grizzly polar bear hybrid. AKA the Groller Bear or the Pizzly Bear. Great names, great names. What do you like? I like the Pizzly Bear myself. It's the least aggressive. These two aggressive bears make up this rare hybrid that has occurred both in captivity and in the wild. So not only did they try this one in a lab, safe with test tubes, in nature this thing just evolved by itself and is just trucking around hunting as we speak. Yeah. That's horrifying. In 2006, the hybrid was confirmed by testing the DNA of a unique looking bear shot in the Northwest Territories on Banks Island in the Canadian Arctic. A hunter from Idaho reportedly shot a grizzly polar bear hybrid near Saks Harbor in April with his local guide. They had been hunting for polar bears and killed the animal believing it to be a normal find. Officials took interest in the creature after noticing that while it had thick white fur, it also had long razor sharp claws, a humped back, a shallow face, brown patches on its body and was almost twice the size, which are all traits of grizzly bears. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeehaw. DNA tests conducted by Wildlife Genetics International in British Columbia confirmed it was a hybrid with polar bear as a mother and a grizzly bear as a father. Yeah. Netflix can't be horror, here we come. 
The number of confirmed hybrids has now risen to eight, all of them being children from the same female hybrid polar grizzly bear mother. There's only a couple of them. Yeah, thank God. Since the 2006 discovery, the hybrid has been referred to by several names, including Pizzly Bear and the Groller Bear, but Canadian wildlife officials have suggested calling the hybrid bear Nanolac, taken from the Inuit names for Polar Bear and Grizzly Bear. Yeah, that's a sick name. That's a way better name. Let's go with that name, 100%. Number four, the Kulakamba. The Kulakamba or Kulukamba is an apparent hybrid species of chimpanzee and gorilla hybrid found and reported in Africa in the early 19th century. Although no empirical evidence has been found to substantiate the existence of the creature more than once, the Kulakamba has been referenced in numerous times in some mid 19th century work and in some descriptive work from around 1860 to 1899 titled Explorations and Adventures in Equatorial Africa. The explorers refer to this unique ape hybrid as the Kulakamba based upon the description of words used by the First Nations people in the Ovenga River of West Africa. The people allegedly refer to the ape as Kulu because of its unique vocalization, unlike the sounds and abilities of other apes. Kamba is a word meaning, quote, to speak. Okay, that's terrifying. The local people upon finding this hybrid creature were saying that its name came from its ability to make sounds and talk unlike any other species. The Kulakamba is believed to be much larger with a flattened face, longer, larger skull, but more bipedal than a chimpanzee, meaning it walked on its legs much more like us. Although there has not been a documented sighting of the Kulakamba since 1881, in 1996, a picture of an unusual looking ape was taken by Peter Jenkins and Liza Gadsby at the Cameroon Zoo, showing a seemingly hybrid ape that fit all the descriptions of the Kulakamba, being supposedly that of a chimpanzee and gorilla hybrid. Could this be like a new form of sapien roaming our planet? Is this thing Bigfoot that the FBI is talking about? I don't know, what do you think? Number three, pythons. In the 1980s, a small number of pet Burmese pythons were released into Florida wildlife. Couple here, couple there, nothing crazy. Since then, these slithering snakes have started to wreak absolute havoc on wildlife and communities and have become something of a weird science project. A number of Burmese pythons running loose in the state of Florida are now officially a hybrid species, which could make them even more evolved than their other snake relatives. Scientists from the United States Geological Survey of the Everglades National Park analyzed skin and cell tissues from around 400 Burmese pythons that were captured in Florida between 2001 and 2012. The team wanted to learn more about the invasive species in order to better understand Florida's threat of the overgrowing population posed by wildlife and locals. Sure. The researchers expected to find only the pure genetic makeup of the Burmese python, coined the American alligator killer. It's quite the reputation. But according to the study, the number of interbred snakes with somewhat of a new genetic makeup started becoming more worrisome the more that they found. When two species come together, they have a unique set of generic traits and characteristics that they use for survival. This is made up of the environment around them. Indian rock pythons are smaller but much faster. Burmese pythons thrive in jungles and grassy marshes and are much, much bigger. Together, mixed with a little swap and spit, is this demon serpent. Yeah, the new and improved Floridian Jungle Croc Annihilator. Again, Q campy Netflix movie, Croc Killer 5. I don't know, or something like that. When researchers involved in the new study analyzed samples found in Florida, they discovered that some animals assumed to be purebred pythons were also carrying new DNA, making a new rock python. Yeah, that's awesome. Couple of guys let their pets out, and now there's snakes with double the abilities running around or slithering around just by accident. This guy just rushed like a million years of evolution. Yeah. Thanks, Floretta. Number two, Beetlejuice. A living beetle computer hybrid with legs that can be fully controlled by humans has been created by researchers in Singapore. I feel like that should have been on every newspaper in like 2016. Like, did you hear about this? Cause like I never did, you know? The beetle joins a long list of insects that have been turned into robots since the early 2000s. The others, of course, including hawk moths and cockroaches. None of those insects, however, had their walking speed, step frequency, and gait fully controlled by humans, making the beetle bot the first of its kind. Okay, this thing is terrifying. I've seen what Sophia does with the AI that is capable over at Hanson Robotics. This thing's gonna be the next bug terminator. Like, I feel like this is the prequel to Starship Troopers. Researchers apparently ran electrodes into the leg muscles in the beetle's first pair of legs and then stimulated movement by running currents through each other specific leg, Dr. Octavius style. 
The giant flower beetle, or Messinorina torcata, was then controlled via wires mounted onto the insect by Dr. Hirotika Sato, an aerospace engineer, and his team from Nayang Technology University in Singapore, tracking the beetle's motion with a 3D motion capturing system. They were then able to make the beetle gallop and walk alternating legs. First off, this is a little cruel, but also pretty cool. I didn't even know that bugs had muscles in their legs. The hybrid might prove a useful step towards building robots for use in disaster zones where they could be equipped with cameras or microphones and navigated through tiny cracks to search for humans trapped under rubble. Okay, I like this thing all of a sudden again. Yeah, this is good. This is good news. Blending technology with the animal kingdom. Ant-Man and Wasp style. I like it. Due to the beetle still being alive, of course, humans would be able to switch from controlling the beetle to letting it navigate on its own way. When the insect computer hybrid robot encounters an obstacle, the user can simply switch off the controller, allowing the neural control networks of the robot to overcome the obstacle. In doing so, the researchers can manipulate the different walking speeds, patterns, flying directions, and all other forms of the motion. Basically, it's playing PlayStation with a bug. And number one, killer bees. Speaking of more creepy crawlies, we have these nasty things. The African honeybee, AKA killer bee, is a hybrid produced originally by crossbreeding the East African honeybee with various of the European bees. First introduced in Brazil in 1956, 26 swarms escaped quarantine and since then, this aggressive hybrid has spread throughout South America and North America by 1991. Yeah, that means before Pearl Jam was really going, there wasn't too many of these flying around. Once in a blue moon kind of deal. But time flies. Typically much more defensive than any other honeybee, these killer bees react faster and can chase a person a quarter of a mile. They kill about a thousand people each year and even kill cows and horses. Although there are 29 recognized subspecies of bee, this seems to be the most aggressive. Biochemists have tracked down the brain chemicals that make killer bees so ferocious. It's the compounds which seem to be present in higher levels than the much feared Africanized honeybee, which makes less aggressive bees turn more fierce. That means that it can turn other insects into a more aggressive version of themselves. Honeybees are incredibly territorial, fighting to the death to defend their hive with multiple painful stings, but killer bees, the even crazier hybrids of the relatively docile strain, are more aggressive. Yeah, way more aggressive. Apparently these things are also really, really smart. Like, fish and bees are now able to communicate to each other. Do you know that? In a recent experiment done in Austria in 2019, using a robot translator, engineers from Swiss Federal Institute of Technology and four other universities are able to make the species able to transmit signals back and forth to each other, subsequently resulting in them demonstrating coordinated decisions. Yeah, Google it. Apparently these bees are so smart, they can signal underwater to fish. Yeah, we might not even need the controller for the bugs soon enough. Just when I thought the animal kingdom couldn't get even scarier, bees and fish are texting each other. Yeah.